Histology is a focus of lab, not lecture. So I won't ask you to identify these layers in lecture, but as you know, I think structure is important for function and I'm right about that. So we want to go over this histology. First, what I want you to do, so this is uh, about a hundred X cross section of an intestine. Can you see how here's our lumen? And I want you to label the three, name the three layers. Can you recognize them? So you will also see this, we'll look a lot more at this and zoom in in lab. But um, for now, let's do our mucosal or mucosa. This is made up of our epithelial layer. and our lamina propria. We'll zoom in to looking at those two later. Then we've got our submucosa. That's this pink here. So this is our mucosal layer. Submucosa, we're gonna have some glands in there that we'll talk about. You can see some specialized um, lymphoid tissue here. Then we've got our muscular layer. Muscularis, if you said muscular, that's fine. Muscularis externa is what this is. Um, there is a couple different layers of, of muscle. And right, these are things that you should be able to apply from knowing, we went over the generalized anatomy of the digestive tract. And you know, there's gotta be muscle there, right? Because this stuff has to, to, to do segmentation and peristalsis and mixing of, or whatever it is in that region of the digestive system. Okay, if we zoom in to a little section here, let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna zoom in right there. So don't lose where you are. This is what we're gonna see. What are these little finger-like things sticking out? This one is one. This one is one, and these are each villi. Each is a villus, villi is plural. We'll come back to the importance of these. You cannot see microvilli in this view. They're there on the edges here, but these are villi. Here we can also break down. So this whole thing here is about right here is our mucosa. The simple columnar epithelium is just this layer around here. And actually, let me do that in a different color. Let's do purple because it often stains purple because of those nuclei. The nuclei stain purple. Simple columnar epithelium. And so what is that white and kind of light pink stuff in here? This is our lamina propria. The lamina propria is all along in here. The other layer you can see in the zoomed inversion is what? Our submucosa. Wonderful. We're now going to look at a schematic view of the same structure and um, look at some more of the components and why they're, they're, why they're so important. So here are some of the structures we're going to need to know about. So this is the same view you just saw over here. Um, just for reference, we're zoomed in to right here, just like we were in the previous. Um, slide. I'll go into this anatomy in the next video, actually. So here's our layers. Um, we've got submucosa, I'm sorry, mucosa, submucosa. Notice there is a muscular layer there that I'm um, going to ask us to ignore. And you can see there's now, because this is a schematic, we can see lots of other 
things. First, within our simple columnar epithelium, there are several cell types I want to talk about. There's our simple columnar epithelium again. You can see that single layer that surrounds that lamina propria. Our simple columnar epithelium has epithelial cells. Yeah. Um, some of these are goblet cells. That's these orange ones here. And some of them are absorptive cells, also called enterocytes. What do you think these do? They are going to absorb nutrients. So we will look at that movement that zoomed in version view of what happens to get stuff this way. We'll look at that later. Goblet cells are these. When we have that stuff move in, so let me actually add something. Let's say we're having sugar move in. Where's it going to go? It's going to go into the bloodstream. This entire thing here made up of a capillary um, and a, a lymph vessel. This is called a lacteal. Here it's labeled. So that's this as well. This is how we're going to get the nutrients that have been absorbed into the bloodstream and first to the liver and then beyond. So again, we'll come back to this, but lacteals are actually for fat specifically. Um, that's how they're going to enter the body. Other substances like carbohydrates and proteins can enter directly into the bloodstream. So overall, in this lamina propria, we're going to have, after absorption occurs, stuff enter the body. Absorption is when stuff enters the body. Before that, it's outside of the body, right? And so it's useful for me to, uh, in order to remember that, really see it going into either the blood or lymphatic system right away. It's where it's entering the body. Okay, two more things, I believe, on this picture. One is both our types of glands. One is our um, duodenal gland, duodenum, duodenal, that, that's specific to the duodenum. Oops, duodenal gland. These are mucus producing. They're going to be produce an alkaline substance that helps to neutralize the stomach acid coming in. So these are only in the duodenum. And they're in the submucosa, right? You can see that. The other structure is this one right here. This is, I'll label it up here, our intestinal gland or intestinal crypt. There are a bunch of cell types in here, um, that, the blue and the white, but it's actually a whole bunch. Um, I'm actually going to do those in the learning outcome video. Um, I'll name here which ones I want you to know. I don't have time to, or room to um, say what they all, write down what they all do. We're, I'm gonna want you to know S, M, I, and G. I did not think to come up with the acronym yet. To work on that. Come up with your own acronym. Okay. And intestinal glands are located throughout the entire intestine. All right, they're going to dump intestinal juices with all of the products of these cells into this lumen. These are going to be important hormones and things that regulate activity. The last thing I want to show you on this slide is Peyer's patches. 
These are typically further down from the duodenum. So this would be ilium. We got more distal ilium, um, so toward the end of the uh, small intestine. And these are Peyer's patches, which are lymphatic tissue, malt, mucosal associated lymphatic tissue, lymph lymphoid tissue. Um, you may have read about it briefly in the lymphatic chapter. They are located in the lamina propria. And they're going to have, it's lymphatic tissue, right? So your intestines play an important role in immune function. These are called Peyer's patches. Okay, here is the learning outcome. And we've done all these. I do want to tell you here what each of these four cell types, um, what it secretes. And the reason I chose these four is because they secrete the things we're gonna talk about the most. So S cells, these are going to produce secretin, a hormone you've already heard of actually, because it's going to, it regulates um, gastric secretions as well. It's one of the things it does. M cells produce motilin. Motilin, also a hormone. Motilin, motility, it's going to accelerate gastric emptying um, and intestinal motility as well and stimulate pepsin production. I cells, CCK, remember that hormone? Cholecystokinin, cholecystokinin, going to be related to regulating gastric activity, but also um, pancreatic and bile juices. And last one, G, you know these already, actually, gastrin, also a hormone. I don't know why I wrote a hormone next to each of these. They're all hormones. Um, gastrin is produced both in the stomach this is intestinal. If we're talking about G cells in the intestine, then we're talking about gastrin produced in the intestine. So we will see these again, especially these two.